Hey friends, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And today I wanted to talk to you about candida and the biochemistry changes that it creates. How does candida yeast overgrowth affect your basic biochemical reactions? So in this post, we're going to talk about the symptoms that are produced. We're going to talk about the mechanisms that create the symptoms. And then we're going to talk about the testing procedures that you can use to help identify yeast in the body. And then we're going to finish up with some simple supplementation, some ideas of what could help you dissolve, remove the organic toxins or metabolites safely and effectively. So first, let's start off with yeast and biochemistry. Now remember, yeast is a normal inhabitant of your gut, of your GI tract. You have bacteria, you'll have fungus, and you have yeast that are all supposed to work symbiotically within your gut to help you digest, repair, and recycle, and absorb. They are there to help you out. But remember, if we feed yeast or candida too many carbs or starches or any type of sugary substance, they can actually overgrow and produce toxins. So put it this way. You know how wine is made? You basically take fruit sugars, you take sugar and water, and then they add a yeast into the substance and the yeast does what? Eats it, eats the sugar, and produces ethanol, alcohol. That's what happens in your gut. If you have yeast in your gut and you eat too much sugar, it will produce ethanol. And in basic biochemistry, you literally have ethanol, which should be broken down into a substance called acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, by a gene called an alcohol dehydrogenase, for all you nerds out there. Aldehyde, or acetaldehyde, is then broken down to acetic acid by another gene called an aldehyde dehydrogenase, ALDH. And then that is turned into what we call as acetyl-CoA. This is all a basic process within your liver that takes the ethanol to acetyl-CoA. If you do not have a properly functioning liver, functioning liver because of improper genetics, you will actually build up ethanol, which is alcohol in the blood. Not even from drinking alcohol. Have you ever heard of non-fatty alcohol syndrome? You have yeast eating sugar producing alcohol, ethanol in your body, and you walk around drunk in the head, feeling foggy headed, neurological conditions where you can't think straight and you actually have muscle weakness. Now this can cause not only muscle weakness, not only brain fog, but a myriad of symptoms such as ADHD, or it has been associated with these symptoms, ADHD, OCD, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, even linked to autism, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, arthritis, the list can go on and on. 